So I came away, you know, after looking into the organization, became much, much more critical of it. Um, of course, its biggest, you know, fundraising pitch over the years, one of its initial pitches after it abandoned the anti-death penalty thing, which it just wasn't lucrative enough, it doesn't, didn't generate enough money, and it scared too many people off, was the Klan. And of course, this is the brilliance of Morris D's marketing strategy. Everybody hates the Klan. Of course, the Klan is a disgusting, horrible organization. But what D's has always done is to exaggerate the power of the Klan and other far right wing groups to make it appear that the country is teetering on the brink of, you know, being, you know, the Klan seizing power. So it's always sent out this ridiculous fundraising pitches where the Klan is puffed up and exaggerated, which is just completely dishonest and misleading. Back in 1987, a classic um, case, Dees wins a $7 million judgment against the Klan for the murder of a young black man. Um, and then it uses its victory in that case over the next couple of years to raise $9 million through fundraising. And it suggested in these fundraising pitches that the $7 million had gone to the, mother's, the mother of the victim, of the, who, this boy who was killed by the Klan, when in fact the Klan was bankrupt, essentially. It had no money, and the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center won for this woman $52,000, most of which, I think, in fact, I think all of which uh, she had to give back to the center because they had given her an interest-free loan. So this is a situation where, you know, it's the, the organization is raising a lot of money on the basis of fraudulent advertising. And if you look at the reports by charities or groups that monitor charities, they are extremely critical of this sort of practice. Um, what was really striking to me, too, was how much money the Poverty Center raised over the years and how little it actually spent on civil rights work. I wrote a piece about it um, in Harper's back in 2000, which you can find online, um, which I, yeah, I think it's called the Church of Morris Dees, which you can just a Google search should turn up. And back in, 19, in, in, in 2000, it took in $44 million, um, and it spent only $13 million on its core programs. And most of this money, it, you know, the difference, which I guess, you know, for, uh, my math isn't so great, but it's about $31 million. Most of that money went into more fundraising to raise more money and into bolstering its endowment. Now, back in 78, um, in the early years, Dees promised that he'd stop fundraising entirely once the Southern Poverty Law Center reached an endowment of $55 million. He'd stop. No, more, no reason to raise more money. At the time, he had about $10 million. But then over the years, they start raising lots and lots of money. And as they near this figure of $55 million when they're supposed to stop, suddenly they up the ante. Now we'll stop when we get to $100 million. Okay? And they said in a, in a newsletter, that's an amount that will allow us to, quote, cease the costly and often reliable, unreliable task of fundraising. Well, this just never happened. I mean, by 2000, when I wrote about them, they were up to $120 million. And that year, they spent $5.76 million on, fundraise, on fundraising, which was twice as much as it spent on civil rights law. By 2008, and mind you, this is after their invest, they had lost $48 million in investments, they had $174 million. You know, so they've just been raising money and raising money, soaking up money that could go to legitimate civil rights groups that do honest, admirable work. But instead, you know, with these tearful pleas about how they're constantly going broke, it seems, based on their fundraising, you know, they raise all of this money from people who are duped into believing that the center, you know, could cease to exist at any moment if you don't hand over your twenty-five or hundred or thousand um, dollars. Anyway, the endowment is $174 million currently, which, as I've noted in several articles that I've posted online, is bigger than the GNP of many smaller nation states. I mean, you know, I think it was between Tonga and Togo last time I checked. I mean, it's a lot of money. It does not need to be raising money. It doesn't spend the money for good purposes. Um, you know, as I've I noted in some of my reporting, uh, Dees in 1990, I think it was 1998, he was inducted into the Direct Marketing Association's Hall of Fame, you know, <laughs> for a very good reason. And, you know, if you look, Jerry's report is filled with great details. One thing he cites is um, Tom Turnipseed, a, a lawyer who was a former associate of Dees, who described one fundraising pitch 
where they sent out the envelope with six different stamps. Um, and Turnip Seat said that, you know, this was to give the impression that they, they were, you know, barely staying alive. And he, they, Jerry quotes him as saying, it was like they had to cobble them together to come up with the 35 cents. So, I mean, to me, it's just, it's, it's, it's not an honest organization. It does some good work, um, but based on the amount of money it raises, it does very little. And I have always encouraged people, don't give them a dime. Give it to real civil rights groups that do real work. And that is primarily why I agreed to talk. I really think that it's an organization that needs to be exposed and criticized, and I'm happy to do it.